The giant African snail, also known as the giant African land snail, is notable because of its large size. The species is native to East Africa, particularly Kenya and Tanzania. It was first recorded in the 1800s, but has been introduced to many other parts of the planet as an invasive species. They're generally at home in humid forest areas. Now, while the species has evolved in tropical areas, they tend to thrive in more temperate zones and even hibernate when living in colder, dry climates. In Africa alone, they are found in 14 countries and are considered invasive in eight of them. Those include Ghana, Madagascar, Nigeria, and the Seychelles. The snail is found in various Asian regions, including Nepal, Israel, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, Japan, Vietnam. They're also found in Italy and Spain. Fulica is also an invasive species throughout Oceania, including American Samoa, French Polynesia, Palau, Papua New Guinea, and Samoa. It was eradicated in Tuvalu. They're also invasive in much of South America, including Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Paraguay, and Peru. The snail was found in Florida in the 60s, where it took 10 years and $1 million to eradicate. They were introduced in 2011. Eradication efforts took them till 2021. This invasion problem has spread across the globe. The issue is that these snails eat a large variety of agricultural plant products. They generally travel by accidentally stowing away with imported goods or packaging. There are a lot of these snails in Taiwan, which is where most of this footage was recorded. Look at this. How many? One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm, I think that's it. Ten. Oh. 11. This snail is listed as one of the top 100 invasive species on the planet. Considered one of the world's largest land snails, they could reach up to 8 inches or 20 centimeters in length and 5 inches or 13 centimeters in diameter. Though I have seen up to 10 inches in length on some sites. Their weight hovers at around 32 grams. Fully grown, their shells consist of seven to nine twists or whorls. The African land snail never actually stops growing as long as it lives. However, its growth rate slows down in adulthood. They move along on a heavy layer of slime, which allows them to move over rough or sharp surfaces. It has been said that they can slide over a razor blade without injury. They have light brown shells with darker brown stripes. Sometimes the stripes are beige or yellowish. These snails have an average lifespan of five to seven years, but can live up to 10 years under ideal weather conditions and when they have enough food. It eats all manner of vegetation, but it will still eat bones and even cement to get calcium for its shell. Giant African land snails eat leaves, vegetables, fruits, and flowers. One of the biggest reasons for their success is their vast diet, eating almost anything, feeding almost over 500 different plant species. In addition, they will eat dead animal matter as well. Like other snails, they are hermaphroditic, meaning they carry both male and female reproductive organs. If there is a size discrepancy, the larger snail generally acts as the female and carries the eggs. 
perhaps due to the greater resources required to carry the fertilized eggs. A gravid snail, meaning one that's carrying eggs, can lay as many as 500 eggs at a time and can repeat this cycle every eight to 12 weeks. However, the average number of eggs carried hover around 200. Their benefit or role in the environment appears to be that of a trash compactor. They dispose plant and animal matter. In cooler climates, they also churn soil loose as they dig down to hibernate. They are also prey to several creatures such as glowworm beetle larva. They are fed on by lamprid and corpine beetles. Hermit crabs are another predator of these giant snails. The crabs also use their shells as homes. The coconut crab is another predator. Domestic ducks, other bird species, and wild pigs eat these snails as well. Wild cats are another one. And of course, humans. They are considered a delicacy in some parts of the world. Sometimes the snails are released into habitats where they have no natural predators. The threat that snails pose to humans is through a sonophilic meningitis, which is carried by the snails. Rat lungworm is another parasite. The most common way of transfer to humans is through eating the snails, as they are consumed as a delicacy in some regions. There are other parasitic and bacterial contaminants that can cause problems for humans when consuming these snails. The greater threat the snails pose to humans, though, is through their appetite for agricultural crops. Just an idea of how many you see around Taipei. They love these little fruits that fall from this tree. So there's one there. There's two here. They might be about to get it on. So touchy touchy. Happening here. These snails are popular as exotic pets. The USDA, that is the Department of Agriculture in the United States, bans their import based on their risk to agricultural and human health. If considering one as a pet, check your local laws before moving forward. Much care must also be taken to properly dispose of any eggs laid by these pets. As pets, they're kept in five to 10 gallon tanks with a soil substrate. There are countless videos and web pages detailing the housing and maintenance of giant African pet snails. Care should be taken that the moisture of the tank is kept up. When being handled, it's also recommended to hold the pet with moist hands. And as pets, they're mostly fed fruits and vegetables. Some sites list occasionally adding minced meat or boiled eggs to their diet. Their calcium needs are addressed through providing a supply of cuttlefish bone. As with any exotic pet, much care should be taken that the animal isn't inadvertently or purposely released into the natural environment. Interestingly, some studies have been conducted on intelligence in these relatively long-lived snails. Now there's an assumption 
that any long-lived animal holds some intelligence just to stay alive. It appears that these snails do have a talent for finding and remembering food sources, but show less ability when avoiding predators, which is probably attributed to their slow movement. A particular piece of information about the giant African snail comes from a study on the effect of music on the intelligence of the animals. And this was in November 2015 in the Journal of Entomology and Zoology Studies. And I'll read a part of the abstract here. Cognitive abilities of snails in this study were monitored as time taken to complete the tea maze run post exposure to two different soundtracks for 15 minutes for a period of five days. A highly significant reduction in run time, that's the time to go through the maze, was observed in snails exposed to music, signifying enhanced cognitive effects in comparison to the control group. The significance was higher in the snails exposed to meditative music with lesser variation in frequencies as compared to a rock soundtrack with varying frequencies, meaning that they got smarter off of the meditative music than off of the rock music the results of the studies confirm that sound generated vibrations augments cognitive capacity with an increase in short-term memory gain. Resonating vibrations in the form of waves can definitely bring a change in behavior of organisms without auditory features as observed in the studies, which may induce biochemical changes at the cellular level. The mechanism for which needs to be evaluated. So meaning that snails do not hear with ears like us, they would just be absorbing the vibrations of the sound. And we do not know the mechanism of how that would change their behavior. Successive animals such as jellyfish raises the question, is intelligence overrated? Perhaps it's just our way to measure how much animals are like us. But there are seemingly many unintelligent creatures that have been around longer than we have.